Okay, you're coming from West Tile, great. Right? phone calls. Uh, this meeting is now in session. This is the subcommittee of the Hoyoke City Council known as Charter in Rules, which meets frequently. Uh, to my left is member Kevin Jordan, our president. To my right, Councilor Linda Vacan, Ward 5, and Councilor Todd McGee, Ward 7. Also with us this evening is Councilor Bartley, Councilor Lopez, and Councilor McGee. And late. And late. <laughs> <laughs> Payback. <laughs> we have our first item, an item that we uh, took up a week ago, introduced by Councilor Bacon, that the no member of the Hoyoke City Council or other elected office of the City of Hoyoke shall be permitted to hold any other elected office, including any elected position in the Mass General Court. Motion will be to re receive, re uh, remove from the table for discussion. So All moved. those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Councilor Bacon, if you. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's pretty self explanatory. Uh, we discussed it in committee, I think, some time ago. And then in the transition with the different legal staff, I think it got a maybe fell through a crack somewhere. And so we're really revisiting it because we had asked them to put it in legal form so that we could bring it to the council, I think a year or so ago. 
So we're just um, reviewing it to get action on it at this point. I did contact the law department in, uh, this afternoon and got two things. One, essentially language, and the understanding, and Kevin, you can help me out here, is that this would require a uh, about question. Hmm. Do you I don't. I don't know. No, I don't agree with that. I would say it would require a charter change. However, it's a charter change. It correct. would not require because it's not affecting the term or quantity size of the council. This is just a prohibition to future members. You can't. If you go and get elected to state rep or senator, you can't also be a city councilor or mayor or clerk or treasurer simultaneously. But it would definitely be a charter change. I agree. Charter change. Any other discussion? Can I, can I ask a quick question? Not so late. I'm sure this has been done before throughout the state. I'm sure this has happened. Uh, do we Lawrence, Lawrence would be a good example. And what happened there? Do they allow he, it? Uh, he eventually got voted out. He was both mayor and state rep. And there was a lot of heat about it that he was collecting two salaries. Because now, as you know, right, we have the issue going about city councilor and city employee yeah, so um, you can't do the two salaries but you can unless you have a prohibition you could be mayor eighty five thousand state rep sixty five thousand and you're collecting both simultaneously unless you had a rule that precluded that interesting or for that matter you could be treasurer see our charter right now says you can't be on the ballot for two offices municipal at the same year but what you could do is you could be two different years. Oh, interesting. So, you're, so you're, you know, it, it's sort of slipping between all the cracks. Yeah. That's why... <clears throat> there's no lawsuit. I guess my question is, there, there hasn't been any lawsuits or case law. Or... So we, we can make the rule and it's fine? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we'd, have, to... we'd have to approve it and the mayor would have to approve it. But... Okay. A lot, the law department did let us know that throughout the 50 states, some states adopt this outright, some states are... More flexible, and some states leave it up to the uh, the county or the municipal government themselves. Thank you. So Massachusetts, I guess it's more or less up to us ourselves if we want to adopt language that would prohibit the uh, holding of two offices. Councilor Drain. Yeah, just basically, I, I think we should adopt this on the basis that I don't I don't believe we should have a person being mayor, con counselor treasurer or clerk and simultaneously state rep or state senator holding both offices at the same time uh, you should pick one or the other and I think what you're seeing in other communities that have had this issue come up albeit it doesn't happen too often is it's one of the two positions is getting short shrift because I don't see how you could be a full-time elected office municipally and be a state rep or state senator and do it justice simultaneously. So that's why I would support the change. Councilor Lisi, we are, has joined us and we are on night, just on item number one. Is that a motion? Yeah, my motion would be to adopt it. Second. So the language would be that this committee adopt and recommend to the full city council that a charter change by adding no elected official of the city shall simultaneously serve as an elected official in any other capacity, including that of an elected official in the Mass General Court. And that motion, Councilor Lopez. I'm over. Can I of course. Sorry. I'm not sure if that's going to cover what's going on in Springfield with uh, Councilman uh, Williams. He was a city, he was a city councilor, yep. Yep. ran for state rep. Yep. Continue being a city councilor. Yep. And now he's out in January, I guess, because he didn't. It, well, yeah, you're okay there. You're you're you can. Well, we actually had it oh. was more than Bud Williams, right? When <laughs> when Aaron first got on, he was doing both simultaneously. So that this would preclude that from happening. You would no, have to. Um, now, Aaron, to his credit, he didn't run again for the city council position, but this would preclude you from simultaneously holding both positions. So if you're on the city council and then you get elected, you could stay 
until January when you get sworn in as state rep and then you'd have to get off the city you'd have to turn in a resignation um, that's actually what like Evie Chesky did yes. and yeah. some of the other ones all right thank you the definition of mass general court is the legislative body I had to make sure look that up today yep. of, uh, of Massachusetts it's a very old term so I, I think that would connect everything and, and that's why it says elected office in the mass general court you know, aides to reps and aides to sen senators, I no, guess, could be city councilors if... That's right. We've had that before, too. They can also be governors and district attorneys. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Five to zero. Item number two is introduced by Councilor McGee and received by this committee November 21st, one week ago. Councilor Leahy, <laughs> that the City Council consider a rule change for the start time of the regular City Council meetings, that the regular scheduled meetings of the City Council shall start at 6.30, not 7.30. Uh, Councilor Jourdain is going to excuse himself from discussion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, by the way, friendly reminder to everyone, we have executive session slash legal stuff tomorrow at 6.30. Just wanted to remind everybody of that. That didn't come out didn't come out in any email or anything. It is posted. I, I believe you. Uh, Brenna did, you? did, yeah. Okay, today? Yeah. Got the today. Okay, mm -hmm. I got it at my house. I haven't been home. Yeah. Councilor McGee? I just want to point out something. Um, if you look at Linda's order, it says 10, 16, 12. Todd, just, just use a mic, would you? <laughs> Thank you, Councilor McGee. Uh, Councilor McGee, did you wish us to change the time of the meeting, or would you like to just go into frivolous and... I'm just you know. kidding. Um, so I filed a list of orders. Uh, if you start at 10, just to point something out, it says, whereas we had several suggestions. That's kind of where the list goes from there, so I didn't, there was really no order to this. But uh, with number three, one of the suggestions, or actually number two was... Um, seeing how some people are here earlier than 7 or after 7, would it be more beneficial to start at 6.30 like our, you know, these type of meetings would be more advantageous for us. So that was just a comment or a suggestion as this thing is breaking Joe. Trade-off. Trade-off. Any other discussion? Councilor Jordan. Just, to re just for a trip down memory lane, historically the meetings were 8 o'clock many, many, many years ago. Then they were 7.30 for many, many, many years. And then our now clerk, uh, Murphy McGee, made the motion to go to 7, what, about maybe six years ago? And uh, that's where we've been at. So this would be another move to 6.30. You know, whatever the, the, whatever the majority will is on it, but... I don't know. I think it's to me personally. I think it's starting to get a little, a little early, but that's your call. I have no real preference. I don't mind six thirty. The, the over the years, the objections to the early start was one of the objections to the early start was wakes used to run, you know, from uh, three to five and then six, five, you know, five or whatever. So we always wanted time to be able to attend uh, to attend wakes, but wakes typically now run. In you know, from three to seven or or throughout, so it's 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 more convenient to be able to get to one. Is there any other discussion, Council Lacy? Thank you. Um, for me, I think it's it's tough getting here at six thirty all the time. I have a small child, and there's lots of running around and preparing dinner before I come out here. Um, committee meetings are a little bit more informal, so there's no you know shower and getting ready before the meeting. Sorry, <laughs> um, but I do, um, and I think others do like to be able to get home from work and prepare themselves for the full meeting. Um, and that half hour of time um, gives us ready, gives us time to get ready. Um, I think it also gives us time to do things like executive session in the same evening or hold a quote unquote emergency committee meeting. Um, in advance of the meeting in that half hour window where it just gives us a little flexibility and wiggle room um, if there is uh, a serious situation that needs to be attended to. Um, so I'd, I'd prefer the seven o'clock time. Councilor Bacon. Thank you. I've heard from at least one other counselor that getting here earlier is a time crunch just with other obligations. 
Any other, anybody else? Councilor Leahy? Well, I come straight from work, so 6.30 would be ideal for me um, because it, it would be perfect. However, if other people can't fit that in their schedule, uh, you know, I'm just going to go along with the majority on this one. Take a vote. Yeah. We'll see where it's at. Yeah, I, I, wouldn't be, I, I wouldn't be in favor. Councilor Lopez. <laughs> we let we let Councillor Drain talk. Yeah. We just want to get your opinion, <laughs> Mr. Playsons. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I've heard from a lot of city councilors about the ten eleven o'clock closing of the city council meeting. That's too late. Yeah, this is. But I'm not sure if six thirty is going to change that. I, to me, it is a suggestion brought up. So, as with all of them, as to what might be more beneficial. If the majority says, you know, seven makes it easier for them to do it, then, then we stick with seven. But with any of these, it's just a, a talking point to, to see what's going to make it easier for everyone and if something like something different. That's all. How about a motion? We, and we can let the full city council decide. Just that be complied with and send it over to them as a... Um... Our 10 minute discussion become an hour discussion at council. council. <laughs> Pass it out without a recommendation. Yeah, yeah. do it that way. Yeah. I have a problem with saying complied if it, because it, it has to have an up or down vote at the city council. And you need final language on it. <laughs> council could theoretically adopt it. Motion out without recommendation. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Item number three, introduced by Councilor McGee on November 21st of 2017. <laughs> In order that the public average there, Joe. in order that the public comment list be increased, public comment list be increased to allow more sign up and talk and adjust time allotment in accordance to the increased size. Receive, take off the table for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Councilor McGee. Yeah, with this one, uh, a question or a comment came up of there have been times where we have suspended the rules to allow more people who signed up to to speak and then we adjusted it accordingly. So would it be more advantageous to at least allow more people to sign up and then have the, the standard time frame instead of um, changing our rules? So uh, someone suggested that we look into that. Whether we like it the way it is, that's fine. We can keep suspending the rules to increase number or do we al allow more names to sign up and then adjust the time right now so we have something set in stone? Councilor Bacon? I'll weigh in on this one. Okay. Um, I think in the interest of time and I think in comparing ourselves to other communities, we're very um, encouraging of the public to come down and address us before the meeting. But I think in the interest of the length of the meetings and the lengthy agendas that we often have, I think this is a good amount that we allow. And I think when there is a hot topic and more people come down, I think the president has been very flexible in having people be heard. And I think more often than not, we're within the parameters that we have set, in my recollection, anyway. I think if it's not broken, let's not fix it. But Councilor Jardine? Well, right now the rule is seven people, two minutes each. So I'm not sure what the proposal would be to change something other than that. Basically, we've been just changing, you know, suspending the rules as needed. So if you get a hot, hot topic X and 20 people show up, then usually what we've been saying is, okay, 20 people and give them each a minute each to say their spiel. And then, um, you know, there you go. But I don't think you really need to systematically change it. Because when this was all created six years ago, the, the rule, the view was, oh, you know, Let's, let's create it, let's go 15 minutes, it won't be really a big impact on the meeting, it's good to hear from folks, and we allocated sort of 15 minutes at the beginning of every meeting. It seems like it's working fine. I, I'm not sure why, obviously some counselor approached Councillor McGee to say, you know, this is a suggestion. I'm not sure what the proposed, um, 
if it's not seven people for two minutes, what, what else would it be? I, I don't know what the suggestion is. Can I ask a qu I'm sorry. Question? I just had a question. Um, I, I think it's fine. I, I don't think it's, uh, there's, as, as Linda said, that Kevin um, has um, let other people go longer and whatnot, and uh, that's not a problem. I was just wondering if we could start responding to people. People come and they make, you know, blatant, you know, you know, they come up and they say uh, X, and a lot of times it's not X, it could be Y or Z. Um, that was just my only thought on this. Yeah. <laughs> before, before I answer that, I think of, Lisi. I think of, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Lisi. Um, so I, w I would put a proposal out there of um, having it 10 for 90 seconds a piece, so we're still retaining that um, 15 minutes of uh, talk time, but 10 people, so we don't have to take the time to go through the vote to suspending the rules to allow for the additional speakers. Um, I think it's rare that we go over 10. I mean, at times I've seen 12, but really it's it's very rare. Um, and I think that the, the idea here, I didn't make this recommendation, but I could see the value in it, um, that if you just go to 10, keep the um, 15 minute time frame by going to 90 seconds, enforce the time um, as best we can. Um, there's no there's no loss there, and in fact, there's the gain for not having to suspend the rules. We could play some music and play them off. <laughs> Anyone else? I would second Councilor second. Lucy's motion. Okay. Ninety seconds per speaker. Mm -hmm. A minute and a half. Strictly enforced. <laughs> um, Council, I, I I think in the perfect world your idea is a good one. Right. But if thirteen of us start responding to oh, one I person, mm -hmm. I think it's more. And we're going to start responding to the thirteen people. It's going to become a debate. Mm -hmm. I think and that's why we just got to yeah. grin and bear it and listen to what they have to say. Can I do? I listen to every one of them. <laughs> Take notes. Unless it's personally, it's very rare that I give the gavel, but I had, when some people start saying, and counselor so-and-so, you're a right. fill in the blank, then, then, then they get the gavel. But other than that, people, as long as they keep it esoteric or larger than personalized, I feel the council generally is a X, that's okay. On the motion to amend our rule to be 10 persons for sign up at a limit of 90 seconds per speaker. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Item number four introduced by Councilor McGee, that the City Council will invite in school students to the City Council meeting to do the Pledge of Allegiance and have these students and parents recognized on the agenda. Motion received, take off the table for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Councilor McGee. Uh, yeah, um, this one, when I heard it and Phil, and I, I'm, I'm very supportive of this. We're always trying to get our students involved, and this is another uh, way of trying to do it to have them come in um, if, they, if they want. I mean, it's for them to volunteer, and then another way to recognize them is to put their name and, and the parents' name, if that's what they want, on the agenda to show um, you know, recognition to them. So trying to get kids involved in, um, in the government. We, uh, we have the two seats for the, the students to be here. This is just another way of trying to, to bring them into, uh, into City Hall. So, And they don't have to stay here all night. It's right in the beginning. So it's not like we're asking them to stay till 11, 12 o'clock at night. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Council Lacey. Thank you. Um, this sounds like a really great idea. I just want to know um, how would we get people signed up and who would, who would manage that? Yeah, we can reach out to Dr. Zreich and ask him if this uh, is something he would support. I'm sure he can ask the high school. He can ask whether it uh, be the principals like Jackie Gassine, at Ian White, and so on. So we can uh, we can do it that way. I mean, that, that wouldn't be too hard. Maybe each school can take a, uh, a month you know, or, or a meeting and rotate, you know, and then have a, have a notify Ryan or Brenna maybe. Might even be quicker or easier to notify Brenna and just have it on the agenda. 
that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And is this adopted as a rule change or is this just something that we do as like procedures behind the scenes? Good question. I think it's a rule change. Yeah, you want it, to be, it to be a rule change. So it's a rule addition. A rule right? addition, yeah. Or, I, mean, I was actually going to ask the same question Rebecca asked. Um, does it have to be a rule change? I mean, you could just do it. I just mean, the Pledge minute. of Allegiance is on the agenda. Right. It, that would require a rule occurs. change to say not do the Pledge of Allegiance, for example. Um, but you could have whoever leads us in the Pledge of The President just happens to speak first on the Pledge of Allegiance, I guess, just by tradition. But you could have anybody come in. I don't, I suppose you could make it a rule, but on the other hand, what if you can't get students to come in and do it? Technically, you're in violation of the rules because you don't have a school student leading you in the Pledge of Allegiance. Maybe you just, I don't know, maybe we amend the one about the council representation of a student to say, and we also would like representation um, by the Hoya Public Schools to come to the meetings and lead the City Council and the Pledge of Allegiance. I think it's a wonderful idea. I mean, I think it invokes citizenship. I think it's great for these children to uh, um, to also be exposed to the legislative body of the city. I think it's a wonderful order. I'm just not sure you need it as a rule, but whatever you're whatever you want to do is fine with me. Councilor Baker. Well, Lynn, Lynn had her hand up. I'll wait, Linda. Councilor Baker. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's a great idea, and maybe under where we have the student representation, we could just add in that student representatives from the school system may lead the council in the yeah. Pledge of Allegiance, and, and that would then rule. make no, it yeah. possible but not required. Yeah, yeah, amend that part of the the rules to say that we, uh, as Joe said, which are great ideas, every month give a different school. An opportunity to invite them in for that month. Well, right, and it would be great to let the schools let us know. And then yeah. if they offer it up or that some kids mm -hmm. can do it, if not, it's great. understandable. Mm -hmm. I'll make that as a motion. The, the only thing I want to note is that the section about the youth representative is about the the um, youth ambassador or ambassadors. Mm -hmm. So if you want additional people besides the ones that are yeah, like... Right, that other yeah, student that, yeah. representatives may from time to time lead the council, lead the the council in the Pledge of Allegiance as an additional like a line, paragraph. Like a line at the end. Yeah. What rule number is that anyway? Is it, is it? It's 65 about for the, um, the youth ambassador. So why don't we add a, a line at the end of Rule 65? Rule 65, every month a Hoya Public or Charter School be invited to send rep student representation to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, if available. If available. available. I'll, I'll make that as a motion. Second to that? Second. Any further discussion? Rule 65, Councilor Trini? Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Item five, introduced by Councilor Bartley on November 21st of 2017. Late files are legitimate, but it is unreasonable for councilors to keep track of them. Thus, ordered that the city council consider and adopt the rule change that states all late files shall be posted to the next meeting's agenda in their own section. Motion received, take off the table for discussion. Yes, All those in favor? Right. Councilor Barley. Yeah, so I hope it's pretty straightforward. Uh, I think we all know what happens with late file orders. We, we're, we get to the end of a very lengthy agenda and next thing you know, we're a late file queue. We don't know what was written, by whom, and after, after the president reads it. It's ridiculous. It, it's, it's a, the setup is, is, is just doesn't make for efficient government. Stuff goes into the jacket. You look back on agenda as to where it was. I, I don't write all these things down. So there's got to be a formal process and procedure put into place. It cannot be that possibly that hard for the clerk to add to the next council's agenda what the late files were in order from A through Z, however they're enumerated. So I, I hope this is a straightforward kind of order and we can adopt that tonight. Councilor Jordan. 
Well, right now the rule is if the council either sends it to committee, theoretically the rule says now, right, under the, the belt tightening that we had, which was you're supposed to give a legitimate reason why it's an emergency for this meeting, then it goes as a late file. I think that's the part that's being overstepped, quite frankly. And in fairness to the clerk, it's hard for her to police that. Number two, so if the count, it's supposed to just go to a committee, absent a suspension of a rules, no discussion, um, unless the council suspends the rules to take up final action. So that's the current rule. Now, if that didn't happen and you didn't have a legitimate reason for a quote unquote emergency, there isn't a special box on the next agenda. It just goes right into the regular orders, just like any other. It just goes right on the well, regular Kevin, agenda for the next yeah, meeting. That, that's, that's not the point of this. The point of it is not have the clerk police the late files. It's, it's not for the city council president to, I mean, councilors know what the rule is. And yet, I tell you, my first meeting here, we had a late filed order from the Ward 2 counselor signed on by the former at-large counselor to make High Street a two-way street. I kid you not. You're yeah, right. That was the very first meeting I was here, to make High Street a two-way street as a late file. We've had <clears throat> numerous counselors here because something comes up in the middle of a meeting and they get excited about it or emotional about it and they walk up to the rostrum and they hand, they get a piece of paper from the clerk, they go back to their desk, fill it out, and they walk up to Ryan, they hand it to you and, and you read it. Correct. Whether or not it's an emergency or not, that's not the point. In my first sentence, I say in here, yes, they're legitimate. So I'm not questioning the legitimacy of any counselor's actions. All I want is a summarization of what they were. I heard you when you said they go to committee. I know they go to committee. But my point is... Well, uh, why, why, well my point is everybody, every other counselor gets it in on time. It's summarized in the agenda. We all see it. The name's attached to it. And we know where to go look on our past agendas, where these, are, where these orders originated. So all I'm asking, I don't think this is a big ask, is that the late files from the prior meeting, because no way Madam Clerk is going to know what they were for the agenda, is that they're just posted to the next agenda. Hey, can I ask a question, Councilor Barley? When you say next agenda, uh, it, the agenda goes out on Friday. We all know that. If a late file is something that comes after the agenda goes out, so if it comes in on Monday, are you saying... The Tuesday night agenda? No, or I'm saying two, two weeks. weeks. Okay. Just, two weeks. Just clear. Councilor Drain, I think you were yeah. responding to that. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I'm I'm in agreement with everything you're saying, David. The only thing I would take was the procedure of changing the order of the agenda to make a new special section about late files of the previous meeting. I, I, don't, like... I don't want I don't want to change the order, Kevin. So just stop it. Just, okay. just have her type it up or have the clerk type it up and affix it to the back. As a, as a separate Word document, I, that no, it cannot I, be hard. I'd like to go one step further to say, why don't we just ban late file orders? On, and how you get around the banning, if there was a true emergency, Special right, meeting. was you could suspend this rule on no late file orders at the meeting, okay? Which is effectively what we're doing right now because you can't take final action on a late file unless we suspend the rules. So what we could do is just flat out ban them, but if uh, an item was so urgent, right, and quite frankly, I don't even think some of the biggest ones is the council violating it. It's usually from various departments not getting stuff in on time to get on the regular agenda. And those are usually pretty material, okay? Um, and, and those are stuff that we should be aware of before 7 p.m. on Tuesday. So what I would like you to consider is just flat out ban of late files and then they'll just automatically be on the next agenda as a regular order or communication and if the council has something that comes up as an emergency, suspend the rules. Councilor Bacon. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm very supportive of this order for two reasons. I believe that the late file rule is blatantly and repeatedly violated at every city council meeting. So yes, we did endeavor to tighten ourselves up, but it hasn't worked. Um, there have been very serious uh, financial matters, 
filed as late file orders and in my view that violates the open meeting law or certainly the spirit of it if not the actual word of it when we have tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars in late files that are sent to a committee that never appear on an agenda so I'm totally in favor of any late file that is ever taken up in any way shape or form that it should appear on a written agenda um, but I do think it's totally overused and I can probably count on one hand the number of times there's been a legitimate emergency late filed order in the chambers that I've heard so I'm warm to both arguments of banning them although I think if we say we're banning it we will simply be suspending rules yet again to take them up so I think it is crucial that they appear on an agenda regardless of what else we do with the language thank you oh, so I, yeah thank you I too uh, am in agreement of this order um, I'm not saying this happened any time in the last four five six seven years but since my time on the City Council many times on the City Council departments would try to sneak financial things in because they you know what was me uh, we have we're time constrained if we don't get this in now it's not going to happen and this is going to uh, result in you know XYZ um, and it, then we're stuck here without having a, uh, the benefit of having them in front of us at a council meeting or sub council or subcommittee rather and now we feel obligated to vote for it uh, it's not the right way to do business um, and I've you know over the years too I'm not saying it's happened uh, anytime recently but counselors would purposely <coughs> file late file orders it was it was a strategic move um, so Mr. Plaisance in the back here um, couldn't pick up on it early on or any other press. Uh, it, was, it was done strategically, and we all know that. Uh, they were not fooling anybody, but unfortunately it wouldn't hit the papers or hit the media uh, until it was too late. So uh, I am in favor of this. Thank you. Councilor Lisi. Thank you. Um, is there any way we can uh, get an updated agenda? I know often we come to committee meetings with an updated agenda, things that have changed, or even on, on Tuesday nights for our full council meetings, we often have an updated agenda um, based on changes that have occurred since the weekend or you know, post one o'clock when the agenda is created and Tuesday night. So I wonder if we could avoid some late files by allowing um, modifications to the agenda to be registered. You have the 48 hours. That's the open meeting. The 48 right hours that's, is the agenda. That's throwing the yeah. open meeting line out the yeah. window. Right. By my, you know, you've got the, 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 it's posted for, you know, per, was it 30A, whatever it is. Um, right. It's posted for, for that reason by law. So no, you don't, you don't get a modified version. The, the language as tonight, the language on the full city council meeting allows us to bring in late filed um, orders which may be discussed at the meeting um, with reasonable explanation but I think everybody here is made and, and I think we all agree with everybody's point here this evening so I'm going to be just a little bit of a devil's advocate David just bear with me and and this is the problem everybody here has filed late filed orders at some time that yes. thought they were in, very important. extraordinary important now let me tell you what's important but Maybe some people say it's not important. A handicapped parking spot, okay? Does that sound important? You get a call on Sunday, someone desperately needs a handicapped parking spot. What's like two weeks? Well, two weeks becomes one month because it has to go to committee and ordinance. <clears throat> so if you, you tell a person on Sunday, you're gonna have to wait a month, maybe a little bit longer to get it measured, to get everything done. That's minor, but very important to one of our constituents. It's, I, I <clears throat> have seen this, I agree especially, I think two people said it, three people, Councilor Leahy, Councilor Drenane, and I think David said it too, is this stuff coming from a department head or from an auditor is unacceptable, which is eventually through the mayor. Yeah. And, and you'll get one of them, we sometimes get several of them, mm -hmm. you know, and, and most of them are appropriations that I, I, I think we should you know, say dumbfounded. No to those. Sometimes there's an emergency one, which we recognize, a modification to something that we heard in the mayor's office and then a different figure came on the agenda. And there needs to be a, you know, something that has to get voted on. I get that. But I, I think what I'm trying to say is I agree in a change, but let's make sure it's practical to who's ever running the meeting and to us in the meeting as far as 
to, you know, a quick suspension of rules and we accept one or two crazy late filed orders, that's fine. If we have 15 crazy late filed orders and we're there suspending the rules, that's, that's going to become, it's going to cause a bog down at the end of the meeting. And I'm just being the devil's advocate because I, I agree with this. And I think, you know, Councilor Jernain knows what I'm saying Absolutely. because nope. that no discussion, go to committee right. was kind of a way to resolve what we were doing because right. what we were doing was we discussed every one of them even when they were going to committee. Councilor McGee. Um, and I agree with what everyone's saying. And I think, <coughs> Dave, and correct me, you're not saying to kick them off to the next agenda two weeks later. You're saying just to track them. Exactly. Right. So, and, I, and I'm with uh, Councilor Bartley on this. I'm with Dave on this in the sense of there have been times where a financial thing comes in and it's late file and I tell Ryan, I need you to put X, Y, and Z on the agenda. He's like, I can't find it. Right. I'm like, because it came in as a late file. Okay. Right. Because I, I will write them down. The problem is no one else might have. And if I didn't do that, it can get lost in the shuffle. So we're not saying not to accept them and send them to the committee. We're saying accept them, send them to the committee. However, whether we email everyone the very next day, whether Ryan does it or, or uh, the, the clerk sets up a, a Word document and says, this is what was accepted last night and sent to these committees, or she get, puts it on the next agenda two weeks later, like Dave was saying, just to say, these things came in. They weren't on the original agenda. However, this is what came in and now they're gone. So it's a tracking mechanism, which I believe is, is key because there have been times that things have gotten lost. And you say, well, where was it? And you come to find out it was a late file and now you're, you're running around trying to track it. So for me, I, I, he's not saying to kick him off to the next meeting, which then, Joe, your argument is absolutely right. As a ward counselor, I get a phone call on a Saturday or Sunday about an issue. I file it simply because I don't want it to wait. Granted, it's not a, a you know a super emergency, but I know it's been acted on. It's sent to a committee. And it's ready to be processed. So, to me, I'm fully in support of that as well. So, I think Councilor so Bartley is, is right on, on point here, which is track it, tell us where it wants, so that way we have an ability to see it. So, I, I support that. Councilor Bartley. So, uh, I thank you for all those comments, all the prior comments. I appreciate all of them. So, just briefly, the I, I would just ins I would insist. I would ask that you, I really insist on this, is that we attach it as an addenda to the agenda. next agenda, mm -hmm. mainly because, you know, when I... When you say I, next agenda, what agenda Okay, so let's, let's just, let's just let, me just, let me just, let me put it in, okay, so, so our, our, our next house. meeting is, is, de is December 5th. Yes. Tomorrow. Late file comes in today. We get, <coughs> we, we get, to, or tomorrow, tomorrow. We, get, we get 10 late files, you know, A, A, A through M. They go on the... Uh, 19th. They show. So they're all posted to the 19th, well, Kevin. That's not what the conversation I'm listening to here. No, no, that's what I'm saying, saying. He's saying you receive them, send them to committee, you but on the track 19th, them. It shows. Listed. It shows them finally. So because mm -hmm. right now they're not shown as ever on the agenda. But they 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 are in the minutes. minutes. They literally could be coming out of committee, as we have an item that says they're going to that's committee. Get confusing. I don't think it. I don't think it'd be confusing because it's just a yes. There something on the agenda that we already sent to committee. An addendum to the agenda. I, I don't think this is a hard thing because how else do we know where these these orders are? Minutes. We have yes. It's true. We have it's true. We have minutes. It, that's very true. So we now finally have written minutes. Yes, that that is true. To me, it's it's a it's a lot less cumbersome to have them affixed to an agenda. That's me. Mr. Bacon. Thank you. The problem with the minutes is through no fault of anybody's, just as a matter of process, it takes a certain amount of time for those to get completed. And we usually get them, I mean, we always, almost always get them before our meeting, but not necessarily very immediately after the city council meeting itself. And this leads to that gap where there is no physical order that is then sent to the committee and some of the committees are meeting in between the city council meeting and the next city council meeting. So that's where the paper trail becomes problematic. It's right very shortly after the city council meeting. And it has become problematic at times, especially when we've had a lot of late files. And they've still been happening. 
a lot. And I mean, I take your point as a ward counselor. I know if somebody wants a handicap placard or something, you want to get that in the queue quickly. But a lot of the things that we take up um, could easily wait till the next meeting and just be properly on the agenda. That's not. But that's not what's either. being proposed. I know. I know. Okay. We're proposing okay. that we keep the ability to file those late files, but he's asking that it shows officially on an agenda. And I've objected every single time material, financial, late files have been taken up. I don't even think we should take them up. I think it's really violating the open meeting law to sneak these hundreds of thousands of dollars of financial transfers under the radar, never to be listed on an agenda, and then people would have to be a detective to be watching every committee agenda to see where they ever showed up and what happened with them. And I just think that's the opposite of good government. Now they'll be listed, and, be, and it's not going to be confusing because it'll just say late, late files. files from December 5th. Right. Informational purposes only. Where did it go? It, it won't be confusing. It'll, it'll, say, it'll say who filed the order, what the order st stated, and, and, and maybe we can get creative and say what, to what committee it was sent. Um, but it, it would just be a way to track it. That, that is as simple as it can be. And maybe it'll That's have a Lopez. <laughs> <coughs> maybe it'll have a chilling effect on late files. <laughs> can, I, can I make a suggestion? <laughs> of course. Anything we, we receive as late file on a meeting that next meeting, we get, not minutes, we can call it an addendum, but a separate list of all those late files Joe. and what happened to them. Joe, mm -hmm. I think that way it won't be on the, it'll be, it'll be with the agenda, but it'll be attached. So, so Joe, the clerk does addendum. a great job, and the, her staff does a, they send me emails like constantly. I would, I would hope they would send me an email if we get this process up and running. Yes, Councillor Bartley, these were the, 12 late files that were filed as, as a courtesy, but if she doesn't, that's okay. So long as it's somewhat, some, so long as it's attached to the next agenda and the public gets to finally see mm -hmm. what was previously unwritten and unknown to them. Because I think the public looks at those agendas more so than they do than, than our meeting minutes. Yeah, it's easier to read the agendas than it is to read the minutes. Joe. Lisi. Can I make a friendly amendment that instead of having this as an addendum to the agenda, that it's just sent as a communication? So we have one piece of paper, as you're saying, that just lists everything that's a late file, and then oh, I want to attach the agenda for sure. It mm -hmm. can be in a separate communication if you want it. You can you can suggest that, but I want to attach to it. I I really insist upon it. Attach to an agenda. Let me see if I got the language that might work. The motion would be that. A listing. This is Rule 26. Rule 26. The motion that a listing of all late filed orders, and let's take it another step if you don't mind, communications or petitions be attached to the next city council agenda. And I used attached purposely. So it would be a listing and by, by the city clerk, but also with, you know, what happened to them. What, Motion to refer to committee, motion to adopt, whatever happened to them. And this is in, in separate from uh, from the minutes, too. This would just be a listing. I think, I think I'm starting to get it. So, Con Forgive me. Councilor Lopez, I didn't mean to ignore you. I was thinking more about the clerk. I mean, um, if you want that listing that night, that same night of the meeting, how is she, I mean, how she's going to produce that? I mean, it's not the same night. It's, it's not the two same weeks night. later. So you need to, no matter right. what, whatever we do, we do okay. something with any late filed order. Okay. Even if we don't discuss it, we just put it in a committee. We're going to get a list attached to the next agenda. Oh. All right, okay, that, that just said that this sense. is what happened was, two weeks ago. Okay. Okay. Not minutes, sense. just a listing. And where it went. Joe, can you read that again? I think there's a two, <coughs> two amendments that I'd like to make. The way I so far a motion would be a listing of all late filed orders communication petitions be attached from, from the previous meeting yes from the previous meeting i think it needs to be in there otherwise it's going to be confusing and people will think it's of that of that meeting that night from the previous meeting yeah. be attached to the subsequent city council agenda okay as an addendum perfect Is 
it a dendum or a denda? It's a dendum. Dendum, singular, dendum. right? Singular. Well, there's multiple orders, so they're addendum. Whoa. Piece of paper. Latin, masculine, plural. We can debate the Latin later. <laughs> addendum. Um. Yes, one piece of paper, hopefully, unless we have two pages oh, of lay files. Let's hope we, not. We've had 20. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're right. Any further You're thoughts? Right, if not, the motion on the floor is that. Well, hold on. Councilor Jordan, go ahead. So I'm just thinking, I'm looking at Rule 26, which has the 11 different items of the agenda. We have a thing called, after public comment, number four, which we really don't do, but it's called reading the journal of the previous meeting if requested by the City Council. This is effectively the minutes. We just put that in as a communication now. Then we have number five, unfinished business of the prior prior meeting. Then we go into communications. I, you know. Then we have item 11, which is late file orders. Are we suggesting that it's going to appear at the end? Like where on the agenda is the committee? We, should, we need to be specific as to how we're amending Rule 26 to say where on the agenda it would appear. Are we saying... We're going to create an 11 and an 11A, which says late filed orders of the current meeting, and then 11A will be I like it. a listing of late filed orders of the prior meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. I like it, Kev. That works. Okay. I think that's what Councilor Lisi just said. So the clerk needs to know where she's exactly putting that if we pass this. And then we would just, you know, put it. Right. So you want to call it 11A? 11A, which will be late file orders of the prior meeting. Um, Beautiful. Perfect. In fact, if you could, as Rebecca suggested, send them out as a separate communication, well, that would be a bonus. But I mean, I don't want to, as so long as it's on the agenda, that's the, mm -hmm. so the that's public can see it. But if the separate communication. Now, that is that. really just more for housekeeping, as a, or is it going to be. I mean, that's not, that's not housekeeping. That's, that's for, that, this is a public, for the public record. Right. I mean, so, but my point is, a late file order that isn't emergency status currently goes in as, again, we have Rule 44. <coughs> I just want to refresh everyone's memory of that. Is that if you have a late file order that is not of an emergency nature, it's supposed to go in as a regular order of the next meeting. That's going to continue. What you're talking about is simply saying, what happened to late files of the prior meeting? This is a record-keeping item, not a put it on the agenda for deliberation at the next meeting. This is simply to say, historically, what happened at the prior meeting with the late files of the prior meeting? Fine, if you want to consider, but I'll look at, you know, point out Rule 55, if you want to start firing rules off at me, that they're all, all the rules, all our orders are supposed to be enumerated somewhere in writing. I mean, I get it, I get that it's in writing, well, it is, but, but, but nobody sees it. Um, well, the other the other thing is to consider. I mean, some of this stuff in Rule Forty Four, we we're not really following to a T. For example, late file orders are to be limited to ten. We've had more than ten. Um, Wasn't that on the president? That's on the president. That's on the president. But you know. <clears throat> The problem is, what's the next kicker? I get to pick which of the 10 I want. So, you know, then they'll be saying, you know, Kevin's secret agenda is, you know, I left I off the that. one that I said, oh, sorry, 11, 12, and 13. Because that's what the next <clears> one is. <throat> it's left to the discretion of the president to pick the 10, which is nice, but on the other hand, um, okay. Councilor Bacon. I'm all set. Any further discussion? If not, on the motion, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Ryan, if you're listening, you're going to be doing some typing tonight and tomorrow. 
Item number six, introduced by Councilor McGee, order that the City Council Administrative Assistant be changed from a one-year appointment to a two-year term. Motion received. Take off the table for discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Councilor McGee. I think we brought this up before. Uh, it was suggested to come back uh, that he be appointed or she, whoever it is, to what a council is coming in, so every two years. So it's a suggestion, so it was filed again. I filed this before, so second time around. Councilor Drain? Just for historical, for some reason, um, I did a little research project on this, and for whatever reason, a prior administrative assistant was serving a three-year term. Lord only knows why. But the charter, we were only voting every three years, but for whatever reason, um, I did a little research project, and did pretty clear the charter says one year period so this would be a charter change if we were to go from one to two um, I don't really have super strong feelings about it the only thing I can say is two-year terms are great if the person's doing a great job if the person's doing a lousy job then you're stuck with the person for two years because it's really difficult because the only time we can remove one of our appointees is a section 15 which says for good cause and this would fall under that so if you got somebody who's doing a super duper job they you know we basically rubber stamp this appointment we don't really go out and solicit other nominees you know you're there's nobody opposed to it that's why as a general rule I have opposed expanding the term um, beyond the one year because it's just sort of perfunctory you know we basically vote the person in and when they're in unless you know there's been serious reservations we uh we've left it as as it is so i'm just saying what's to be gained by two years i'm not i'm not sure i mean uh because like i said if you get a lemon then you're stuck with that person for two years so you, you just need to consider that that's my only point Thanks. Um, I'll be brief, but in general, I'm a fan that all of the appointments that are one, two, or three years should be open for competition at any time that their terms expire. But we had that grand debate a few years ago. So um, I then, as a second fallback position, would say that the position should be treated equitably. So if there is only one position within all the appointed positions that is one year, then I would say we should be more consistent in the length of the appointments. However, I think for the best government, we would have them all be competitive at the end of their term. But that's a debate for a different day. Seeing you open up the debate, I will say I'm against advertising for people who are in career positions unless the, the city council indicates they were looking for a change, at which point we do advertise. We always advertise if there's a vacancy, mm -hmm. but we won't bring that debate up again, right? <laughs> um, so I just, I, I believe we, a two-year term makes more sense, not against what's been said, but for this reason. Um, most of our appointments are two-year terms. Most of our full-time appointments are two-year terms. Uh, the city council is a two-year term. So the appointment goes along with the city council unless there's just cause to remove someone, which we do have a mechanism to use if we needed it. Um, the, you're, you're giving the person who, and maybe the, a new person for the first term goes through a probationary period. We could adopt that language also. But you're giving the person a two-year term that coincides with the city council. The city council changes, you know, there's, there's always the possibility that the next city council may look to, to replace someone. But I believe that it makes, it makes more sense to, uh, to, to align it with the city council and to keep it consistent with our other appointments. Two years for tax collector, two years for assessor. Um, Those are all three year appointments, sir. Um, but we, every two years we vote for one. And we still haven't talked about the auditor yet. That's a lifetime. <laughs> it was when it was civil service, and we kind of didn't create a, uh, well, whatever. I'm off the subject. I apologize. Yeah. Councilor Lisi. Um, 
if we're going to think of these appointments as career positions that go along with the term of the council, um, I'd like to see in general, I, I had noted this in my guest viewpoint in the Republican, um, more city council oversight of our appointees, um, including performance-based evaluations every six months so that we understand what our appointees are up to, what goals they've set for themselves, are they meeting their job description, um, are they you know, advancing their position in some way. I think we need um, a better tracking system. Uh, since the rule, there's a rule, I guess. Is is, it, is there a rule that's governing this? Uh, it's a charter change, I'm sorry. So I think that we need um, some sort of language that says we need performance-based evaluations of all our uh, appointees, and that would be a separate order. Councilor Reagan? Um, but just to that point through the chair, we did create the rule that gave a lot of authority to the mayor over our appointees, which I personally think hindsight being 2020 was an error, um, but it would require us to undo that rule. Um, not in the case of one or two of the appointees, but in the case of in general our appointees um, and the performance measures but not the position that's before us tonight correct tonight. correct yeah. but I'm just speaking relative to the rules yes. we did change our own rules and give up yes. that authority relative to our other appointees which I think to your point of filing another order would be a good one to refile but um, as I said in my two-part statement I would favor the two-year term if we're not changing anything else do a lay file order for tomorrow <laughs> Not me. No, sir. Thank you anyway. Right. The only thing I'd like to um, say to, to the points that were raised is that um, we did export the daily oversight of our um, appointees to the management of um, City Hall in Room 1. Um, just because we are not here on a daily basis. So you, you do need someone who is like minding the hen house or some, some analogy to that effect. <laughs> but we are still the appointing authority and so we should be the ones that are um, meeting with our appointees to make sure they understand their job description, make sure they're meeting their job descriptions, make sure that they are getting the support and training that they need to successfully execute their job positions. And we should be advancing the position in the sense that what skills would you like to develop? What trainings would you like to seek out in the next year? How can we make you a more robust appointee on behalf of the council and, and the city? So I will be filing that order for our December 20-something meeting, 20th perhaps. 19th? 19th, right. 19th, thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? Motion, motion to amend the charter to make a two-year term for the administrative assistant. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? No. Four to one. Item number seven introduced by Councillor McGee order that the administrative assistant establish a Facebook page for the City Council. Motion to take off the table for discussion. All those so in favor, moved. any opposed, Aye. so moved. Councilor Bacon wants to trump Please Councilor no. McGee. <laughs> Please no. Please <laughs> no. Councilor McGee. <laughs> I may not use the right term. Um, <laughs> Uh, Facebook might not be the right name <laughs> no. for it. Or it's uh, just an update. Website? Website or we have just a, a place for our information. Because no. there's always complaints that, one, I guess there was one issue where there was one way to get to us and try and get our emails, and then there was another way through the computer system or the web page to do it, and that had separate set of emails. Different and I had people call me saying my number and email is, correct, is incorrect. I'm like, well, I had that changed two years ago it's a web site and so it was all messed up and then one of the suggestions was have your own web page and then someone said make it on Facebook I'm like I'm not looking to make it Facebook like we have our pictures there it, it it's just to make however you want to fix the web page. To fix so the however you want to change the language to do that um, someone mentioned Facebook I, I know what they're trying to get at they're not trying not to make Facebook. it a true <laughs> Facebook if you know what I mean that's I mean, the there can be a business Facebook that's not business, as interactive, yeah. but I think 
there's a better way to do it. And I got to tell you, and I'm not the only one, um, Councilor LeBron Martinez and I both found our, our work numbers were listed on the, uh, the local access at one time. We have no idea how they got there. Yes. And it took us a couple of uh, bounds and leaps to get them off. Um, when, we, when any of us work, we're wearing a different hat and we're not doing two jobs. Maybe, maybe amend this to say um, that we invite in the the IT or the administrative assistant who handles the web page to deal with all the issues. Maybe that'd be better. Right? Yeah. The website person? Yep. To redo it or fix it or because it, there's there's still issues that are popping up on it and they have to be fixed. So table it and ask yeah, table for it. Or I have a suggestion, or, yeah, though, if you, sure, if you sure. don't mind. Councilor Bacon. Thank you. Um, I think we could file an order that says whichever path of access to the City Council information is utilized, the end point should be the same information, which it currently is not. That is a very easy technical fix. I mean, if we write it in that way, they should fix it. If you go in this way or that way, you should come up to the same data not two different data sets. And that is a technical issue that we should be able to send over there and just get it done and not wait a month for them to come in and have a 20 minute discussion about IT. I mean, I'd rather just have them fix it. It's an easy fix, they just, it's technical. That would be my amendment, okay. if you would, <laughs> friendly, Second, friendly. Right, but we are, we are gonna first amend and remove Facebook and put city council website. 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 which would uh, website or any, any appropriate social media, would just put website. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Yeah. Council Lee. Uh, I think it was last week or maybe the week before I attended uh, the CPA uh, committee hearing and uh, they actually brought the, the uh, IT person in, the, the lady that handles that, and they were going through the similar uh, conversations as you guys. Uh, they weren't sure if they should do it, uh, a specific page on our city's website or if they should do a Facebook uh, page. And um, I think they went, ended up, what they're doing is they're gonna have more information on the city's website, um, which I think is probably a good thing. However, if you look around uh, you know, throughout the country, um, many city councilors have Facebook pages, and I think it's administered by their administrative assistant, in this case would be Ryan, but just giving information out, uh, and they limit, I don't think people are even allowed to post on it. I think there's a, a toggle switch you can shut off uh, anybody putting post on, so you're not gonna, you're not gonna hear Jim Lee's a knucklehead all over it. Um, uh, but they do put the agendas, and they put all the different committee meetings. But we, I mean, we do have a website where we can do that as well. Thank you. <coughs> Any further discussion? First on the amendment, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Second, are we gonna table it and invite her in? No. Or do you want? Okay, I. Okay, so please, I heard, but please. Um, that our IT staff, please make sure whatever access to the city council information is utilized, that the end information be the same for contact information for city councilors. Okay. IT staff make sure any access to city website be, be the same. I lost the last that, part. That the contact information for each councilor be the same regardless of which access point is utilized by the public to gain that information. Because right now, if you go in one way, you get a phone number and an email. You go in another way, you get a website and a different phone number and maybe an email and maybe not an email. So it's just disjointed. I would think it would have to be. They've set up, what they did is they <laughs> set up two endpoints that, that are dead ends. There's two different pages. Yeah, they just didn't update them and keep them the same, and they need to be the same. Any other discussion? The motion that we're adopting is that we recommend the City Council 
instruct the IT staff to make a request the IT staff, mm -hmm. Bill Hamilton would like that better, mm -hmm. to make sure any access to the city, city website that the city council contact information be the same. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. And I didn't even ask why is this in charter and rules? We were on oh, a roll. The next Facebook? It's charter rules and Facebook now? <laughs> we were on a roll. <laughs> I, think was, I, I think it was late. <laughs> Item number eight, introduced by Councilor McGee. Ordered that the personnel department reissue city council badges. Motion to adopt. Second. Motion is to receive. Take off the table for discussion. All those in favor? Just make sure they're the Motion to adopt. Same ones. The, Kevin, the do, you have, ones. do you have that one still? Yeah. Can yeah. you? I brought it to him like about a month ago. Yeah, can we? <coughs> I'm not saying turn it over to personnel, but yeah, I'll you, take a picture of it. Yeah, do something so they understand exactly what you're. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Councilor Leahy. Yeah, I believe they actually. Uh, I think the Hoyt Police get them over uh, uh, the way over to Westover. Century Uniform. Century right? Uniform. Yeah. I think that's where you can purchase them. I have the gold, the gold one. It's about so what if, city what if, council would be a motion to receive, adopt, have sent to personnel, police, in order to comply. So we, Just we, so the police know. We, we also have to make a little trip through the uh, through the mayor's office because yeah. an appropriation is going to have to be made to someone's account. We'll just put it on the debit card. Yep. Mm. <laughs> yeah, here it has For a sure. high limit. They use that regularly here. Now. That okay. So the motion is to receive, adopt, and ask the city council to refer to the mayor, personnel department, and HPD. I think HPD would, HPD would probably get it done for us quicker. And it, this would be for anyone who doesn't have a badge, and we, we can. Uh, See how the mayor feels about the appropriation. They're not that expensive. No. So, you know, maybe 20. And I, I hope you guys aren't expecting about 25 bucks a yeah. piece tops. Probably. Did we all get them already, though? At there's some point, we, at one point, we were actually using the flower fund to pay for them. So if a new counselor came on, they, you know, Dave Walsh would ask them if they wanted one, and some took them and some didn't. I think it looks yeah, like it's, yeah, it's, it's small, big, but, it's, okay. it's, but it's about so big. Oh, it would fit in your wallet if you yeah. were a man. It comes with a wallet, too, though. Oh, did it? Yeah, mine didn't yeah. come with a wallet. It, Joe's got one. But, no, it's, oh, about, okay. it's about half that size. Half that oh, size. Right. Yeah. But it's got the seal like that in the middle of it, and so it looks official. I did a long, long time ago use it a couple times, and uh, we are allowed to cross fire lines, which I don't understand why. But you have to show your badge. Uh, well, we've had fire commissioners wearing jackets that say commissioner, and they're running down the street like fire coats and helmets. So, you know, seen it all. On a motion to adopt, refer to the mayor. Per, have to ask the city council to refer to the mayor, personnel department, and HPD. All those in favor? Uh, Any opposed? So moved. Item number nine, introduced by Councilor McGee. Ordered at the that the attorney assigned to the city council be moved into the city council area to have a desk and microphone in order to be better addressed and answer questions of the council. Received, take off the table for discussion. Oh, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Councilor McGee. Um, this one is, uh, people have uh, expressed con not compl uh, concerns but complaints at they go up to microphone, whether it's on, off, they can't hear it, or sometimes questions are being answered from the corner. Um, so one of the suggestions was, should you move the attorney in to then have a microphone, whether they're sitting here or sitting in the corner, whatever. That way they can have a microphone and just address or move a microphone over there. So however you want to do it, just so that people at home can hear uh, the answers to the questions, because a lot of times that is either on or off or something's just wrong with it. Councilor Barley? Uh, I, I agree with the latter statement 100%. Just get, get, get an extension cord. Get, get a 
cheesy mic like this, or better yet, get some new mics for us and get throw one over the cheesy mic over there, and let let the uh, solicitor have a microphone so right. she doesn't have to go back and forth. But to have a non-elected person sitting here, I, I would just oppose that completely, Mr. Chair. I, I did. I did take Councilor Lacey. I would just suggest um, a second microphone on a stand because I think. It's nice to have the solicitor stand when he or she is speaking to us, um, but I do think it becomes cumbersome at times to cross over um, if there's a crowd there. Even better. Our rules say that we are all supposed to stand when we speak. Oh, wouldn't, that, really? the wouldn't that be a great idea? Mm. That was just the president. Really? Oh, all of us. Oh. oh I, didn't I don't think. That. I think. You sure? Oh, that would cut. I some did. Of, um, that would cut the I'm never back sure. an hour. <laughs> I think it's just the president. <laughs> The, the most important rule I used to always say was the one that's not written. It's called common sense. <laughs> get to get to the vote. <laughs> um, I did talk to Crystal, and she made a couple good points. Not that she would feel uncomfortable and you know to be inside the rails, but she said number one is she's out there working, and she sometimes is talking to department heads, looking things up, and is constantly, you know, doesn't want to be a distraction, and she feels she can do it from there. But I do like the idea of, I always thought that we originally were supposed to put a mic over there. Right. We're going to have the extra mic, and we can, and with the Holy Media sometime coming in to redo this whole system, I think we can make something that works for everybody. Yeah. So, <laughs> an additional <laughs> microphone added for just the city solicitor. Right. But right. is it a stand up mic? Standing. I like Rebecca's idea. I think that's a good idea. So, I meant to say a second stand up mic fee by yep. the desk. Yeah, because in, you know, it, just like that, it would be yeah, removable. You know, yeah. yeah, but sure. Any further discussion? On the motion? That's my amendment. Yep, second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? So moved. Motion to take 10 off the table. You guys might like me. Okay. 10, 11, <laughs> and 13 take up as a package. Motion to uh, suspend the rules to take up three items at one time, items 10, 11, and 13, Second. for the purpose of, I think, Second. disposing of them. All those in favor? Aye. Any, oh, go ahead. Can we go? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I'll just quickly, for our audience, oh, right. read them. Uh, item 10 is, whereas there have been several suggestions, recommendations regarding charter rule changes for the new city council, therefore be requested the committee consider the following. Committees be reduced to three members, five members, and that the committees like ordinance, DGR, and finance remain with five. Item number 11, order that an alternate member be appointed to a three-member committee in order to fill in for any absent member of the day of a committee meeting when necessary. And item 13 is order that two new committees be established a suggestion of the Committee on Innovation and Economic Development, and number two would be a Committee on Special Permits <laughs> and Zoning. Um, however you want to do it, make a motion that it's lead to a draw or complied with, because we took all these up at the last meeting. How about lead to a draw because they have been complied with? Second. I want to discuss them, actually. Oh. <laughs> right, but we're make just making a motion, and, second, and it's on the table. Okay. The, so motion is, the motion is to get lead to a draw because they... It's going well, to be yeah, it's going to be tomorrow night at the same time, but they've been they have been complied with with other orders is what right. I would say. Okay, okay. Uh, Councilor Lisi, I'm going to ask. I mean, I feel like we postponed a little bit of the conversation on these orders last week because we knew that they were coming up this week. Can, can I just point <coughs> out? You are correct <coughs> that there is another order. I do twelve is still on the agenda. Which the purpose was not to finish item 12 tonight but to remind us that we are going forward with it no nope, that's not what i'm talking okay. about okay <laughs> and i apologize go ahead um I, I i i was beginning to make an appeal last week and i'll make it again this week in a more formal way that i i think that we should reduce um i'm sorry that we should change the name of the dgr committee back to re redevelopment or development however you want to think of it um and that we change the responsibilities of the DJ and our committee so that we're taking the government relations part and uh, sending it over to our public service committee which is already doing a lot of the interview work. Um, I think that again it'll make more of a balanced workload between the committees and um, I think that given the 
uh, the state of economic development and redevelopment in the city that it really makes sense to have a city um, as a city council body that is focused on issues of development and redevelopment um, they're also dealing with special permits in DGNR currently and I think that um, they have been doing a lot of um, really great work and they are one of the more <clears throat> active committees and I think that it would make sense to uh, spread spread the workload around That's <coughs> excuse me <coughs> hey, Councillor Elise if I could just ask you a question you, you don't believe that's part of item number 12 on the agenda tonight could be. I mean I guess it could be but <laughs> If we're talking about the, the rules that we're working to get into place for adoption on uh, January 2nd of next year, I would like um, to have this body endorse that rule change. Well, th that's why, and I will be honest with you, that's why item number 12 is on the agenda tonight to decide how quick we want to proceed. Because this, as <coughs> we found out last week, and um, when Council Roman was here, you know, this is something I think has interest by a number of city councilors, but it could be a very tedious task to examine every committee. Last week, and what we're doing this is recognizing that tonight with these additional, th these orders, if I can remind everybody, could not be on the agenda last week because they were received at the full city council meeting on the prior Tuesday, and Wednesday, the city hall was not open. So because it wasn't a business day, we could not add them to the agenda because we don't take late filed orders in, in committee meetings. Um, and we, we had to hold off until this. But essentially on these three orders, we had the discussion last Monday. I know you were, you have your, a, a difference of opinion on the, on the orders, but I also believe that in respect <coughs> to what you're trying to do, Council Roman's order keeps that alive. Now, can it be done by January is another topic for debate. Mr. Uh, Chair? If, if I may. Council Lisi, then Council Barley. Um, thank you, I, I appreciate those comments. I do, I, I do wanna just reiterate the fact that I felt like I was holding off on some of the comments that I, that I would have made at the last meeting because I, I knew that these were in queue for uh, the meeting tonight. But at the end of the day, this is the time to do the streamlining. <laughs> this is where we have the opportunity to um, start to re-envision and reimagine how our committees are going to work for us. We're cutting down the number of um, counselors that are going to be here. We already talked about reducing committees to three member committees. Um, I, I think that the workload amongst the committees um, could be more evenly distributed and I mean, we have the rules in front of us, so I don't see it to be an, an overburdening uh, task to simply, uh, you know, we, we all know what the committees do, so it's, it shouldn't be a, a difficult task to pull out the public relations part and put it into, um, uh, the public relations part of government relations and put it into public service. To me, it's a very natural fit, um, and again, it'll help, help to even out the, the workload between the committees. I, additionally, as I mentioned earlier, the, the focus on development and redevelopment, I think, is something that we need to um, have a committee that's dedicated to. Any further discussion? Councilor Barley, sorry. Yeah, yeah I, I pretty thank you, Mr. <coughs> Chair. I, I, uh, I can make a lot of, first of all, I, I don't hear a motion there from the from that large councilor, so I assume at one point she'll make a motion. Um, I, would, I would hope that nobody would second the motion um, and, and just let it wither on the vine as that comment should be. That, the, the committee that I, um, I think I changed, and I think others have noticed that, and they've said on the microphone has is, is changed dramatically, um, is one that I put a lot of time in and a lot of effort in, and it's not about public relations, and it's not about interviews. Um, the, the purpose of changing it was to broaden the scope of the committee, to make it not a backwards redevelopment, backwards sounding committee, to make it forward looking. 
And so what I've attempted to do over the last four years I've chaired it, my friend I think has attended one, in my recollection I've had dozens, I, I believe she's attended one committee meeting uh, of, that, of that committee. So I, I'll, I'll excuse her for, for calling it a, a public relations, um, but it's, it is about development. It is about broadening the business of the city. Um, and as far as the workload, you know, Mr. President or Mr. Chairman, you're on that committee. It's it's a lot of fun. It's 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 to me that's the most enjoyable part of chairing it is hearing from other stakeholders that 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 are involved with the city of Holyoke that maybe necessarily haven't been to this beautiful building, but now we get a chance not only to introduce them to this building to this city, but we get the we get the feedback from them. So. You know, besides the fact that we've had Aaron and Don in here numerous times and the Mass DOT guys, we've had a whole series of, of people come in and we learn about them, we learn about what their perspective is to the city of Holyoke and it really has to do with what? Not redevelopment, but developing the city. Developing the city's relations with the stakeholders. So, um, I, I could go on. I, I just, I think it's a, uh, you know, I, I, there's not a, a malicious intent here. I, I, I just think it's a, I just think it's, it's based on, on, on not having, you know, firsthand knowledge of what the committee's about, though I've given reports time after time after time in city council. So all councilors should be a, a pretty much aware of what we, of what we discuss. So I, I would hope that once the motion is made, assuming a motion is made, that it would not get a second and that, it will, you know, I'm, I'm sure it'll be brought up again tomorrow and that's fine and we'll have the same conversation. But uh, I, I like the scope of the committee the way it is and I've never been afraid when another counselor has said to me, especially in the body, would you take this, would you take this order on? Would you take this issue on? The, the answer has never been no. It has always been yes, happy. You know what I learned? I learned that from Councillor McGee because when I was here the first few meetings, you know, I'd look over and, and yeah, should I go to finance to find out? Councillor McGee would say, Br bring it in. So, and, and that's how you learn as a counselor. You learn from veteran counselors that are here before you. I mean, I, you know, it took me a good year to figure stuff out, as Councillor McGivern said to me uh, before I even started. It took, it took a good year to figure things out. And, uh, you know, Joe is right. And so, you, but you watch other counselors, you hear what they have to say, and then at some point you chart your own path, I, I hope, well, at least I, I feel like I did, but who cares? So I, I kind of want to keep it the way it is. Uh, I would rather it just move forward as, as a DGR committee and leave it that. <laughs> Any further discussion? Um, I'd like to make a motion to change the name of DGR to the Economic Development and Redevelopment Committee. Motion fails for lack of a second. Any further discussion? I believe the current motion is to give the three items leave to withdraw, correct, Mr. Chairman? Mm -hmm. That was your recommendation? Yes, and, and with the caveat that they were previously well, complied with at, at yeah. our last meeting. And I realize that all these items will be on the agenda tomorrow night, even the last meeting. Okay. So. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. aye. Any opposed? I said aye. Pass is five to zero. Final item on the agenda, and I think I just stated I placed this here. I uh, didn't have a chance to talk to Councilor Roman, but I, I do believe that the intent of Council Roman and, and I believe Council Lisi and and I wouldn't mind looking at some of the committees um, for different reasons as to what goes where noting it's very difficult to change ordinance it's very difficult to change finance with the way the charter is and the way certain things operate uh, under certain circumstances being that they are the only two committees that can meet during the regular meeting of the full city council for a reason um, and that goes into hand in hand with the, the number of readings we have to have for an order, the number of things that we have to do before we can take a final vote at the city council level. So I, I have no suggestions this evening. Um, I'm, I'll leave it up to the committee as to what you want to do with this, if we want to keep it for another meeting. I would say motion to table to another meeting. Okay, it's, it's 
Motion then is to keep on the, is there any discussion? Just refresh my, yeah. refresh my memory from the last Charter and Rules Committee, that is, we are coming out with an order with a package to change the fives and the threes mm -hmm. and. Correct. Okay, so I just want to make sure that's not this order. No. no. That was another one. That is, so, that is out, oh, yes. Okay, very good. That, that was, we, we did that without talking about the, as, as what Councilor Lisi was making reference to this evening, and some good points, Rebecca, but we did this, we did the other order, yep. just numbers, Got to it. make it work for whoever the All president right. has to fill in. And Councilor Lisi makes a point, which I understand, that this would be the ideal time to change if we're going to change. But again, I believe it's going to be a very tedious process to to connect all the dots. All right, so make a motion at table 12. Motion is then to keep item number 12 on the table. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second to adjourn. There's only three items left in this jacket, Mr. Playsense. I would so like you to efficient. let Councilor Leahy know that, that this committee takes care of matters quickly. <laughs> motion to adjourn. All those in favor? Any opposed? So moved. next year.